Okay, so my talk is IPv6 for home users. Um, that link that you need to, or if you want to look at, is right there on the GoGo Net page. On the left hand side, there is a blog functionality, and it kind of, there's an abstract of what my talk is about. And on that page, I put a link to that Prezi and also a PDF that's sitting on my web server that you can download and do page by page if you want some notes or whatever it tends to be. Um, again, GoGo6 in my profile page. I mean, you guys have seen this all, all, all morning already. Why is IPv6 better? Well, obviously, it's the address pool. You, you know, you got over 4 billion IPs for IPv4. It's really small. IPv6, I mean, it, it's gigantic. You're not going to run out. And it, it makes things in your end work a lot better, especially at home. If you're running a blog off your home web server, if you've got SSH access back in, you can get to that much easier. Things to look out for. There's always going to be pitfalls. There's always going to be hang-ups with things that don't support, you know, bleeding edge. And let's face it, this is bleeding edge. We're not, we are on the cutting edge of getting this set up. There's not many people, places or anything like that, that have gotten this working yet. Biggest problem I have found is printers. Obviously, if you have USB or parallel, don't worry about it. If you have network printers that are IPv4, and if they're probably, I'd say, five years older or even newer, they don't support IPv6. The odds of them updating firmware to support IPv6, probably slim. Um, usually, they've released newer models. Let's say you have the, the 1000 model. Well, 1001, which is released you know, six days later than when you bought yours, may have access to that. You don't. Um, mobile phones. If you if you have a VLAN, not VLAN, a wireless network that you share to say your iPhone, your iPod Touch, you can expect those to work on IPv6. A lot of the old, older phones aren't going to. Um, actually, I have a Nokia that I just bought just a year ago, and it has blocks for IPv6, but they don't work. And I have the newest firmware, but the, again, the next model supports it, so it's all timing. Uh, exceptions are all the droids, you know, anything on the Android platform seems to work pretty well. Uh, the HTC Evo, and again, the iPhone, the iPhone, or the iPod Touch, as long as you have OS 4 or higher. Um, access points. We just purchased some high-end Procurve access points for my employer, and they don't support IPv6. You ask them about support, and they kind of go, what? So the odds, I mean, I know the Apple Airport Extreme support IPv6, but as far as some of the new Linksys, D-Links things, again, good luck. Um, content, you probably can't see that real well, real clear, but like th this morning, less than 1% of websites or anything you can, that you can get to over, over IPv6, yes, it's nice to have, but is it gonna give you access to more things? No, probably not. Again, performance. Um, I'll get into this later, but how you're going to get access. If it's native, hey, great. If it's not native, well, then you're probably going to be tunneled, and it's going to be slower because it has to go to that tunnel server first and then out to where it ever has to get to. And depending on where you're at, if you're, say, in Chicago and it's right next door is, is, the, is the next server, great. If you're not, you're sitting in California and you have to go up to Oregon for your tunnel server, there's some latency issues there. People, um, they don't know and they don't care. Um, earlier in the month, I emailed my ISP asking, if, hey, do you have IPv6 access yet? They said, well, yeah, we have our allocation, but we still have IPv4 left to give out, so why do both? Well, you can do both. Like they said this morning, dual stack is the way to go, at least for the time being, because you can get best of both worlds. Um, and again, not to beat a dead horse, but a grandma and grandpa in the living room, they don't care if they have IPv6, if they have IPv version four and a half, whatever it is. If it works, that's fine with them. Why do you want to, why you want to do this? Well, no more NAT. Like I brought up earlier, if you're running websites, if you have SSH access, if you have more than one computer, which most of us do, and want to address them from home, let's stop dealing with the extra ports. Let's not do you know, port 
6,000, 6,001, 6,002, that goes to, you know, direct to them. That way it's a lot easier, it's, there's one-to-one, -one and you don't break the one-to-one -one that, that I mentioned yesterday in the conferences. And if you can't do it at work, if your boss doesn't, doesn't, doesn't know what it is, doesn't want you to do it, if you don't have time, because let's face it, we're all usually swamped and running around work all day trying to get things done. At home, it gives you uh, the advantage of finding these pitfalls first, and then when you go to roll it out at work, all of a sudden you look like a genius because you've seen this in the past, know how to get around it or how to solve the problem, and it works like it's supposed to. And hey, it's cool. I mean, no one else has this. Again, like I say, less than 1% of sites are running it. And in the US, and I'm sure for Canada too, it's just not to that point yet. So, how do you go about it? Um, there's, there's two facets. There's tunneled or there's native. If, if it were native, I probably, probably wouldn't be here having this conference right now. If it's tunneled, really it's gonna go from your home network to a router, to your tunnel broker, and out to, and out to the internet. Again, latency issues can't apply depending where you're at. Native, it just goes from your home network to the internet, and you're done. Um, what are your options for tunnels? Arcane Electric, 6XS, GoGo6, uh, Teredo, which let's not let's try and avoid that, and 6 to 4. Hurricane Electric actually is based out of California here, and uh, Martin Levy is actually sitting in the, in the back there. Um, you, it's a 6 and 4 tunnel. Um, you need to pass protocol 41, which could be an issue for some of your ISPs, because again, if they don't know what it is, they block it, or your home router, depending on if, if you can tell it to pass a protocol and not a port. Um, initially, you're assigned a slash 64, which is, which is plenty for one home network. But if you want to subnet out different subnets, you know, have one for your access points, have one for your printers, you can request a slash 48 and do 65,000, which should be plenty. Um, you can do BGP tunnels if you have an ASN and want to you know, announce your own route, announce your own routes. Um, you can create five tunnels per account, and there's the link if you want to get access to it. They also have a really nice program that will quote unquote certify you, and you can actually progress in steps up to Sage and really enhance your knowledge of IPv6. Uh, 6XS is really mostly Europe-based. Uh, the same thing applies. They do offer or give you a slash 64 up front. You can do a slash 48, again, if you need more networks. They do 6 and 4. They also do tunnels that will punch through NAT. So if, unfortunately, you have that carrier-grade NAT that they mentioned earlier in the day and you actually do not have a public address, you can't do a six and four tunnel, but you can do a tunnel that punches through NAT and will go through NAT layers to get you actually access to the tunnel. GoGo6 does the same thing. They, you can do TSP and tomorrow they're actually gonna show off some new products, but again, they can punch through NAT as well if you don't have the, the luck of having a public IP address. Um, they will give you a slash 64 off the bat you can request a slash 56, which gives you 256 routes or, and or networks to, to advertise, which again should be plenty. Um, your environment. The nice thing is wire to wireless. They, they have standards and most people actually follow them. So this really should be seamless between the two of them. You can do it easily. If you have a Linksys or a compatible router, you can flash DDWRT on there, host your tunnel on the router, Use RA to give out addresses, and away you go. If you can't do that, you can do it on your computer. GoGo6 has this really nice program that you can download, install, and click Connect. Done. You're on IPv6. You can browse Google. You can browse Comcast site. Away you go. Or you can authenticate. You can create an account on GoGo6 with, with Freenet6, and you can actually get your slash 56 that I mentioned earlier. Um, which is nice because then you can enable RA and actually assign IPs to the rest of, the, of your network, to your printers, to your phones, things like that. Um, and also a nice thing is the, the client utility has RA built into it. 
on the second tab there called advanced, you can go down and you can say, okay, I want to share IPv6 via this address or this adapter. So as long as you have, say, wireless and wireless, you can go through and say, okay, I want to, I want to assign RA through my wired interface or vice versa. Again, you can't really see it here, but if you grab the PDF of this or the wired version, you can see a little clearer how it actually all sets out. It gives you your, your, your routes. It gives you your subnets you can announce, you know, things like that. Macs are the same as Windows. Um, you need to compile it, obviously, instead of installing it. But once you're there, again, it works. You click connect, you're online, and away you go. Uh, heads up, Safari still does support IPv4 before it does IPv6. Got a question? Yes. Google 6 takes care of that in the background. Um, as long as you always connect to the same tunnel, Montreal, Amsterdam, things like that. It's yes, it's a tunnel. It's, it's not native. It's still, they, they assign it to you on a temporary or semi-permanent basis. So again, depending on where you connect to, it could change. So all the there. Right, so let's say you're sitting in California. I think the nearest tunnel is gonna be Montreal. You connect to there, it hits Montreal first, and then goes out to where it needs to go to. Uh, again, Safari does, does prefer IPv4, so heads up. Uh, Firefox and Opera do not. They will take IPv6 first if you want to get around that problem. Um, DNS. I don't know about you, but I don't want to pronounce that, say it, spell it, write it more than once if I really have to. So that's like a lot easier to say, pronounce, and spell. As, in, as a result of that, DNS becomes a lot more of a requirement. Um, do you need it? No, but I don't want to be writing out hex characters till I'm blue in the face. I did that enough in preschool, and you know, once is enough. Uh, so what are your options? You can do bind. Bind nine works for sure, and I'm sure, I think I heard bind six and forward will support IPv6. Um, or Windows Server. There's an add-in roles as of 2003 that will support IPv6 D, uh, DNS entries. Um, you also can point your DNS forwarding at an HE server or a, a Google 6 server. Um, the nice thing with those is they support Google's IPv6 project. So instead of doing ipv6.google.com, you can punch in google.com and it resolves to their quad A record, which is kind of nice if you want to start getting more traffic and more, yes, let's say more traffic toward Google or, or toward anybody for that matter. So after all that, Again, you can't really see it too well. You can actually just ping Google by ping space google.com and it, re it returns replies from their IPv6 address. Questions? I know it was short and quick to the point, but it's easy with Google 6. No? All right, guys. Oh, one in the back. Yeah, the slides are already up there, actually. Let me go shooting around through this real quick. Your link is right there. Again, it's on my profile page at GoGo6, so on blogs, and it should be down on the left hand side. So both the HTTP6 and the Google Net HTTP6 server are available Yes. And even if I think if you use Google's what is it, 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 server, it will return quality records too for Google. If you if you didn't want to resolve your DNS over IPv6. If you want to stick to four, you can do it that way too. Eight or the public ones? Yeah, so as long as you query a compatible server that's on their list of servers, that, uh, again, HE, GoGo6, and probably, it's probably a few more somewhere. As long as you query that, they will return the quality record for Google. Are there any commercial, uh, 
Sorry, I didn't hear that. The door slammed shut. What was that? You have to be careful on that. Um, I've seen some postings on, I think Azus has one that he's brought out recently that's supposed to support IPv6 natively right out of the box. D-Links. Uh, a lot of the newer, newer ones will do it. Not the ones that were released last year that are still for sale, but newer ones that were just put out. And the nice thing is, too, you might even be able to get away with new firmware you know, new D-Link firmware, new ASUS firmware, instead of going to DWRT or OpenWRT or something like that. Did they put out new firmware for it? Or do you, or, or do you have it and so does it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've got a really old uh, Linksys WRT54G that, hey, it supports WRT, but there's not enough room on it to do IPv6. There's several Australian companies that there's, there's a whole lot of like, points to look at. Okay. Okay. And again, GoGo 6, um, you, can, you can purchase, they have products that you just drop in and go. If you wanted to, you know, to avoid this and do it the easy way, just drop in, plug it in, and go. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks, guys. And again, if you have questions, find me online. I'll help you out. <laughs>